Good morning. So Vasily asked me if I would be willing to share for no more than five minutes. Uh, if I speak very slowly, I may get it out in five minutes. But so Father's Day, and then I've spoken here before on Father's Day, and and, uh, and have been a father for almost 39 years, coming up shortly. Um, so have some experience with it. All my kids are grown, as you know. But one of the things that I have thought about um, way in the beginning, of, you know, what is the main purpose of a father? And what I thought back then, and I think it's been, you know, confirmed in my heart over the years, is the main thing as fathers that we should be doing is raising our children in a way that they are going to accept Christ. I mean, that, if you're a father, if you're a father, you've had kids, so I'm not always, you know, talking about people, who, uh, fathers who never had children or men who never had children. But if you're a father, to me that seems to be the, the main purpose of fatherhood, not being a husband or being a man, but fatherhood is raising your children so that they would accept Christ. So when I was thinking about what to share today, I thought back of many of those things, and I remember um, when Matthew was dedicated, our first child, um, my parents were here, and what I wanted to honor them as well. And so one of the things that I had said was that, um, that I appreciate the way my parents raised me. And, and um, while I was raised in, in um, being a Catholic, they raised me in such a way that when the Holy Spirit prepared my heart to accept Christ, I did so willingly. And I was a freshman in college and, and um, it was just obviously an awesome thing, and, and uh, I am blessed that I've been able to, to um, uh, I guess, continue on in that life uh, since then. And so that's what reminded me of my own parents, that they raised me in such a way that when my heart was softened enough to hear the gospel message that I accepted it, and that's what I wanted to do for my kids, and that's what I prayed at each one of my kids' uh, dedications. So, uh, in terms of this morning, you know, I looked, what should I share about my family, and I figured you guys, most of you know me very well, you know, you know my, my kids and such, and all the uh, things that we've gone through over the years, so I started thinking maybe I should look at something else. And I was trying to figure out other messages, and I go online and say, what are other things to, to kind of talk about? And so I read a number of articles about fathers and fatherhood and, and such. Um, and so there, what I came across is that there's just many types of fathers. Um, there are dads who are very strong Christian men, dads who put their job before their kids, before their family. I could say it happened to me a, a number of times as well more so lately than it was uh, previously uh, when my kids were small, fortunately. Um, dads who didn't make it to basketball games or soccer games or recitals because sports were more important on the TV than it was in their kids. There were dads who were strict disciplinarians, dads who beat their children, not just um, um, uh, corrected them. Um, dads who abandoned their families and uh, dads who were single parents, there were adoptive dads, good dads and bad dads and everything in between. It's just showing low battery. So <clears throat> looking towards scripture for instruction and direction, I mean, that's what we do. And the Bible obviously has many examples of fathers. Abraham, Father Abraham, Jacob, Saul, David, Joseph, uh, none of them were perfect, and many of them did terrible things that, did, had, um, that led to hardship in their kids' lives. When we look at their good attributes um, in their lives and we try to apply it to ours, 
to try to be a better father, we make commitments. I'm going to do this all the time. I'm never going to do this again. We strive to do better. But in many times we do. We make improvements, and that's what we're, we're called to do. But also what often happens, just like New Year's resolutions, resolutions, is that we falter, we give up, we fail, and we feel guilty. But who is our, the ultimate example of Father? And of course, that's our Heavenly Father. Father God, Abba Father. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. I mean, how much more love can a father have for all of his children than, than uh, to do that, to call everybody home, give us an opportunity to come home? But as an earthly father, we always fall short of, of God's standards. But does God condemn us? No, but he's adopted us into his family through Jesus Christ. Does he abandon us? Does he beat us? Does he ignore us? Does he put other things before us? No. Because he's assured us that no matter what, he will always love us, he will always forgive us, and he will give us eternal life. Amen. So, as Father God forgives us through Jesus of our own shortcomings, our mistakes, um, then we also should, should forgive our children of their mistakes. As Father God does not make us feel guilty, but our own conscience does that, um, if, we're, if it's given over to the Holy Spirit and that convicts us, then we shouldn't make our own kids feel guilty, but assure them that we'll always love them. Um, and, I, and I think often about um, how do we save how do we save souls, right? And we know it's the Holy Spirit, but at least in my reading, what I see is um, people get saved through the love of Jesus Christ not through convicting them of their sin. That happens later. It's the love of Jesus Christ that, that we just uh, want, and it fills that void, and we're called to him. And then as we develop that relationship with God, then the Holy Spirit starts to convict us of our sins so that we can repent of them. And so I feel the same way about Father God and being a father, is that we just have to love our kids no matter what they do, what how good they are, they, all the different things that they get, uh, awards and such, those are, those are fun, they're important, we should be proud of them, but that's not why we love our kids. And so we have to, to love our kids, not convict them. Um, we should instruct them in the way of the Lord so that when they grow old, they will not depart from it. We should love them during their entire life path, on the, all the ups and downs, not convict them, but always welcome them home, because God's mercies are new every morning. So through his living word, God gives us this instruction on how we should live our lives, how we should be a father, how we should be a parent, a neighbor. Um, so let us strive to imitate God, knowing that we will fall short, but God will always love us. And, and that is the example that we should be as a father to our children as well. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you, Tom. That was a beautiful. Did you time it? It was